Hey everybody, Melissa here. So a few months ago, I did a tutorial that showed you how to do calculations within a pivot table. Now I received some comments and even an email saying, Melissa, this is great, but you haven't even showed us how to create a basic pivot table. And for that, I am so sorry. So thank you for reaching out and letting me know that. And that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you how to create a pivot table from start to chart. I can't wait to show you how this works. So let's go ahead and get started. This is a spreadsheet that has all of our sales data for 2023 for Mel's Fruit Company. It has all of our locations, our invoices, customer name, item description, and amounts. Now this is a fairly large data set because it has around 200 rows. And what we want to do is pull it into a pivot table so we can easily do some data analysis with what we have here. To create our pivot table, we're going to go to insert and go to pivot table and then from table or range. So this box pops up and it says pivot table from table or range. Now, if you notice, it's automatically picked a sales, which means it's picked all of the data we have on our worksheet, excluding our headers, which is what we want it to do. Next, it's going to ask us to choose where we want the pivot table to be placed. Now you can do a new worksheet or an existing worksheet. I do a new one because I tend to do charts with this data. And if I tr try to do it on the same page, I get confused, but this is going to be whatever works best for you. So I'm going to keep this as new worksheet and I'm going to tell it, okay. Now, if you notice at the bottom, this is our sales data and it's created a new sheet called sheet two that houses our pivot table. Now over to the right, you'll see pivot table fields, and this is where we're going to start designing our pivot table. So the first thing we want to look at is what filters do we want? What do we want to be able to filter by? Do we want to just be able to see locations? Do we just want to be able to see certain items that we have? Or how do we want to be able to filter it? So for me, it is going to be my item description and my customer name. So I'm going to pull those to filters. Now over here, it puts item description and customer name. Now, if we wanted these reversed and we wanted customer name on top, we could just take over here, grab it and drop it where we want it. And in this case, I do want customer name as my first filter. Now for our rows, we need to tell it what we want to see on this left hand side. So if we pick a customer name and an item description, what do we want to see here? Well, in this case, I want to see my location. So I'm going to grab it and I'm going to drop it into rows. And now you see all of the locations for my company. Next, we're going to look at values. And this is basically what do we want it to give us in these other columns? Do we want it to add up the number of fruits, the money? What are we asking it to do? In this case, I want it to give me the quantity and the amount. So I'm going to drag those into values. Now over here, I put my amount before my quantity and I want to reverse those. So I'm just going to grab it, hold it, and I'm going to pull it to the top and then it's put them in the order that I want them. And if you notice in columns, it matches our values because what our values are, are our columns, quantity and the amount. Now you can add other columns here if you want. Let's just say you want to put the customer ID. I don't do that very often. I usually leave my columns what I want my values to be, but that is an option if that's something you need to do. And to remove that field, just go to your arrow and tell it to remove. Now, if you go up to customer name and let's just say we want to see Audi, tell it OK. It's going to tell us all of our numbers for Germany, Ireland and the US. Let's just say we want to see these and all we want to see is apples, tell it OK. And it's going to give us just that information. So now let's say we want to rearrange some of this. I want to move my location to my filter and I want my item description in my rows. So now if you look, you can see that you have your customer name and your location as your filter. And here is all of your information on your item description. I'm not going to change anything else. And let's just say I want to see the Whole Foods. Tell it OK. 
and it's going to show us all of our fruits and I've got all locations. And let's just say I want to see Germany. Let's tell it OK. So this gives us our information. Now, what happens if we go into our sales data and we add a row? Let's find out. So I've added another row for Germany with a different invoice number, date, amount. So we've got an extra $600 and $1,650. So if we go back to our pivot table and we go up to data and refresh and refresh all, watch what happens to our watermelon. It's now $1,340 and $4,350. So whatever changes we make to our sales data will reflect on our pivot table when we refresh it. So if you notice on row 12, this says blank. Now there is an option where you can tell it to not show this, but I want it to show it to me because I'm generally dealing with large data sets. And when you see blank, it could be an indication that something is going on in your pivot table. Like there's something missing. There's a blank field. It's duplicated somehow. There's something it cannot figure out. So let's go back over to our sales data. And if we look, if you see here, this is an empty row somehow and you can see by the little side box whatever you want to call it that this is what it's picking up on so if i right click on this and i just go ahead and delete that row go back to my pivot table refresh all it takes that away so whether you want to see that or not that's going to be up to you but i leave it there just so i can see if something's going on with my pivot table so I'm going to go ahead and close out of my pivot table fields. Now, if you need to get back in there for some reason, anywhere within your pivot table, right click and go to show field list and it brings you your pivot table fields. If you want to see any of this data in detail, if you double click on it, it will open up another sheet with all of the information that matches what's in our sales data sheet. Now let's look at some of our basic pivot table properties. So if we right click within our pivot table, we can go to value field settings. And this is where you see some of amount USD. We can actually change this to be a count, an average, or anything like that. But I'm generally 99% of the time, I'm doing some of amount. And then if you want to do calculations, there's another video I created to show you how to do calculations within that pivot table. But the majority of the time, you're going to be on a sum. You can go to number format and format it if you want to. I generally leave it as general, but you can do it however you want to do it. You can right click and you can tell it to remove sum of amount. So you can remove a column and a field there. You can tell it to summarize by and you've got your sum count and average here. Show value as you can do a percentage, a percentage row total, but I have it as no calculation right now. Show details is going to also bring up that other sheet that gives you all of your data that's in your sales data sheet. We can go to our pivot table options and within here is where we can look at how our data is set up, which you're not going to spend a whole lot of time in here. Our display, we're not going to change really a lot in here, how it's going to print if you want to print it. Our totals and filters, we can tell it to show the grand total, which we always want to make sure that's on. So in general, as far as the pivot table options go, you're going to stick with what is standard. I very rarely change these, but you can look around, play around in here. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comment and I'll be sure to help you. So now that we have our basic pivot table set up, let's go create our chart. So we're going to go up to insert. We're going to go over to charts and click this little arrow. And we have all kinds of charts out here, bar charts, area charts, line charts. But I'm going to do a column chart and I like the clustered column chart. So I'm going to select it and tell it OK. And here's our chart. Now, this is why I said I like to have my pivot table go to a separate sheet instead of the same sheet is because I may have three or four charts going out here at the same time, depending on what I'm doing within my pivot table. So if you notice, we have a bunch of fields that are in gray and I don't like these being here. I think it just jumbles it up. So I want to remove these. So if you just go to any one of them and right click, 
you can tell it to hide all buttons on the chart. So now all of our gray boxes are gone, but now it looks a little too plain. So let's do a little bit more formatting and add just a couple more things. So I'm going to go up here to the plus, and the first thing I want to add is a chart title. So I'm just going to go ahead and name this Sales Data 2023. And that's a little small, so I want to make it bigger so I can go to my Home tab, just like with anything, and I can change my font size. And I think 20 is about good, so that looks pretty good. So the next thing I'm noticing is my left hand column here or my axis. And th this is like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. That seems a little much to me, especially if we start getting sales data that ranges from 10,000 to let's say 200,000. That seems like a little much. So I want to narrow this axis down a little bit to where it doesn't show as many values. So to format this axis, we're going to go to it and right click, and we're going to go to format axis. Now over here on the right is where our options are. So under our bounds, we have a minimum of zero, which is our zero, and we have a maximum of 80,000, which is where this number comes from. So if we're getting 100,000, 200,000, we would want to change that maximum. Where this 10,000 increment is coming from is under our units. We have major units of 10,000 and minor units of 2,000. So this major and minor unit, they're kind of bound to each other, almost like a ratio. So let's just say I want to change this to 5,000, and that's totally going the wrong direction, but I want you to see what I'm talking about. So let's change this to 5,000. If you notice, we have a lot more over here. And then our minor is 1,000. And it also changed our maximum to 75,000. So what I want to do is I want maybe, let's try 20,000 in between these units. And now over on the left, we have a starting point at zero. And I usually let mine start at zero because I may have some locations that haven't sold anything. But that's going to be completely up to you. But now we've got 20, 40, 60, and 80. And I personally think that is easier to read. And if you hover over your bar, it's going to tell you what that value actually is. We're not going to really do anything in the horizontal axis crosses. We can leave that the way it is. For your tick marks, you can use them. I generally don't, but I'll show you what they look like. They just put tick marks along your axis, but whether you use them or not is up to you. For our labels, we're probably going to leave that the way it is. I don't generally mess with these. I just leave it as next to axis, but that's up to you. You can play with it. So for our number, we have a couple of options. We can leave it general, which will look like this. You probably don't want to make, in this instance, this axis currency or accounting because you have quantity in there, and that's really not going to need a dollar sign. But you can make it a number. And that's going to make it 80,000.00. And then you can tell it zero decimal places. And then it'll show as 80,000 with a comma. So at this point, I feel like our axis is looking pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. So the next thing we're going to look at is formatting our plot area. So we're going to select it and right click format plot area. Now what this is, is this is the background. So right now it's white. If we go and let's just say we change it to green. Ooh, no, that's ugly. No, thank you. I'm going to put that back. <laughs> but what that does is it changes your background. You can leave it a solid fill, which is white. You can put a gradient. You can put a picture. Um, we can pick a different color. I've seen them a light gray. You can change the transparency. You can put a border around it or however you want to use that. But for me, I'm going to go ahead and put it back. So the next thing we might want to do is change our data series. And I'm going to start with the orange one. So I'm going to click, right click, format data series. I'm going to go to my color. And let's just say I want to make this one, this color blue. Now I've got some other things that I can change that I generally don't. We can change the width. We can change the cap type and things like that, but I generally just change the colors. Now I want to go over to the darker blue ones, and it's going to automatically bring it up. And let's just say I want to change this one to a lighter blue. 
and there we go. I like that one better. And then if you notice, it shows our sum of quantity and sum of amount, and it changes those colors as well to match our data series. So that's generally all I'm going to do in there, but you feel free to play around with it, see what it does, what you want to do, and don't be afraid to play around with it. So probably one of the last things I want to do to my chart is look at this axis here. Now, this isn't as cluttered as it can be, but the more data we have down here, the closer together this is going to get. So I like to put my text at a little bit of an angle so that it doesn't get on top of each other, or even in this case, it's going to make it easier to read. So with the axis selected, we're going to right click, Format Axis, and we want to go to our alignment. And you have the option of where to put them within the chart or the data series area and our text direction. And I'm going to do a custom angle of maybe a negative 35 and see how that does. It kind of makes it go in an angle so it doesn't look as close together and it makes it easier to read. Let's do negative 40. There we go. I like that a little bit better. But we do have the option to change our colors in here of our background, change the colors of our text. But I don't mess a whole lot within here except for my custom angle. So now we'll look at something really neat about these charts and pivot tables. So if we go over to our customer name and location, and let's just say we just want to see the US. Watch your chart. It changed our axis and it only has data for the USA. If we go in and we tell it we want to select multiples and we want to see the USA in Italy and we tell it OK, then it's showing the USA and Italy combined. So if we go back to our sales data and there's more information added. So we have a new invoice from the Whole Foods for a thousand quantity of watermelon at $5,000. If we go back to our pivot table and our chart, we've got 46,630 and 328,890. If we refresh our data, our totals have changed here and our chart has been updated. And now you know the basics of a pivot table from start to chart. And that's it for today. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this in the future, be sure to click that subscribe button before you leave. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.